I am here to talk about uh, more about a personal experience and um, maybe bring you to uncharted waters. Think about ascending from a deep dive, buying with uh, other divers, see around the guys, uh, decompressing after a long deep dive and between them, someone without fins. It's a very strange image. I remember some years ago, one of my instructor trainers, trainer said, oh, it's a very strange image to see you underwater without fins. So my name is Mantos Maras. I'm coming from Greece and um, I'm here to talk about diving for the disabled, but not a proper dive, not a recreational um, diving, but a technical diving. There are not written papers. There are no things that, as far as I know, that give us outlines or information about technical diving and disabled people, disabilities. Uh, there are maybe a couple of divers in the world that do technical diving. So we are going to see um, what is going on. And I will try to give you more my personal experience uh, about technical diving. So um, the most of you, you know that uh, diving for the disabled is existing. Uh, different organizations, uh, they're they have their own training programs. Um, some specialized organization like uh, DDI, Di Disabled Divers International, HSA, and so on, they have their special organization for disabled diving. But the most of the main organizations, they have um, adapted their training for people with disabilities, or maybe they have some special programs for disabled people. So everyone knows how to train, how to help or to assist disabled people, but always in recreational programs. So now you can have a lot of questions, of course, and many, many of you think, okay, you guy now in the wheelchair or with the, you are the amputee or the quadriplegic or even the blind, you can dive, but do you need more? Is not that enough for you? Of course it's enough for some people, but as we are humans, you know that uh, there are a lot of things that we want to do over the limits. Otherwise, humanity could not be in this place where we are now, maybe looking for the Mars. First of all, deep diving, the compression diving, diving over the recreational limits is a challenge. And this challenge for many of you is a challenge also for, also for me. Deep diving is offering many times some things that it's not, uh, we, it's not possible to reach it when we dive in shallow water, especially the place where I'm living. I'm diving in a Greek island uh, about five months a year, and all the beautiful things are deeper than 30 meters, maybe. So deep diving is necessary, is a necessity. There, also, uh, there is also diving beyond the recreational limits, but in a professional level, let's say, like dive masters and above. Can um, disabled people be professionals? Can be instructors, dive masters, teachers of diving? This is another thing and uh, we don't have now, I think that the time to discuss about it, but maybe another time. But let's talk now more about um, the technical diving itself. 
Another thing that we can um, discuss and um, have it as a challenge is the rebreather diving. I was uh, back in 2006 trying the rebreathers for the first time, and I found that is a unit that helps me a lot to overpass some problems I had with the open circuit. Of course, open circuit is much simpler, but from the other side, I could have uh, many advantages in the closed circuit, so I stay there for longer. Um, so, is it possible? Is it possible to do technical diving and being disabled at the same time? As I said in the beginning, it's only my personal experience. I cannot talk in general, but I hope I will raise a lot of questions later uh, as I try to make my presentation short. And um, I will just give you some of my own experience. I started uh, diving uh, about 30 years ago uh, with the Greek Federation under a CMAS, like uh, I got my first um, certification, one star open, open uh, water diver. And later I continued to Paddy, where I got all my certifications there uh, up to the instructor level. And I remember the, um, a certain moment when my course that I went to the course director and asked her if I can do my instructor course. She was like, I don't know, can you be instructor? Let's ask Paddy. And I still remember this answer and I'm very happy about it, of course. Uh, we contacted Paddy at this time and they said, IDC, the instructor course is IDC. It will be like it will be. Exams are the exams. The IE will be an IE. If he will be successful, he will be an instructor. If not, not, that's all. So I was participating in my first IDC. I was successful. I was very happy at this time. It was hard, but it was not easy for me. I had to do a lot of adaptation, but I was successful. So I went up to Paddy and later I was the first uh, instructor in Greece under the IAHD, the International Association for Handicapped Divers. And um, I start working with some disabled people. I start working also teaching instructors how to teach disabled people at this time. And then about the year 2000, I start my technical diving as I contact one of the pioneers in Greek about um, technical diving and I contact him and ask him if I can go with him technical diving. So I got my TDI instructs, instructor and TDI diver first, um, like uh, advanced nitrox, the compression procedure, extended range, and then I switched to instructor levels uh, with HDI and TDI. So, um, Later, I went to DDI, Disabled Divers International, as instructor trainer there. Um, I had quite a lot of experience uh, teaching also as staff instructor in PADI IDCs. And later when the law changed in Greece, uh, I could not be any more TDI, Technical Diving International instructor. Uh, and then I follow, I cross over to Andy. And I'm still there as a um, technical trimix instructor trainer. Um, so what my personal experience um, show, it was that it is possible to do technical diving. Uh, I didn't care a lot about uh, the compression sickness, since I try to follow as conservative profiles as possible from the beginning, I had also a lot of experience with the recreational diving and deep diving, but not a, a real decompression dives. But when I went to the decompression, I tried to stay as um, safe as possible. Um, 
so I saw that it is really um, possible, but with many, many um, limitations. So I had to adapt myself. I had to try different configurations. I had to try different equipment. Uh, I had to work a lot with my instructors, uh, adjusting the equipment, the shoots, uh, weights, and everything. So uh, finally, I found out that the training has to be very careful scheduled. And uh, this gave me the opportunity to be also a better instructor later, uh, even with my everybody uh, students, because I think any one of you like to have good students. So if you want to have a good students and when you have to, when you like to certify um, instructors uh, or to certify uh, technical divers, you want to have them good trained. So you have to adjust your certificate, your uh, training. Probably when you have a disabled diver, you have to organize your diving course as uh, longer. You have to do more dives. You have to spend time to set the equipment, uh, adjust the trim, check the diver in different situations. Um, I have some examples like um, shooting an SMB. It is a very a, a so uh, simple skill that many of you uh, have it and do it with one hand, with one, uh, with two hands, uh, looking or without look or whatever. But for someone that he use his arms to uh, to adjust his body and stay um, steady in the water and keep his buoyancy and not having the fins on their legs to uh, adjust and, st and uh, com control his body, it is very difficult to use the, both arms to do another um, skill. So I had to work a lot. I have to find solutions uh, how to shoot an SMB safely and also ascend with SMB. There are solutions. I cannot tell you everything now. It's some secrets, but you can follow some of my course later. <laughs> anyway, uh, I give you an example that uh, it's uh, many of you use the spools now. Uh, many years ago, we used the reels, and uh, I still use a ratchet reel because it's much easier for me. I just shoot the SMB and then I go, go like crick, 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 stay there, swim, crick, 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 go up and follow it. Nothing it will follow down, it will follow, fall, fall down. Nothing it will be like, I have to leap and hold it and whatever. I just have the rats. Um, just was a small example of what we have maybe to think about it. This was the reason that also I went in the past uh, to the rebreathers because then I have to care not so much about the consumption that can be some time hard, like swimming with your arms, uh, adjust your buoyancy, uh, try to do things, and at the same time have to look the gauges, keep the rules of thirds or whatever, and also carry the heavy, heavy um, tanks that they always try to turn you upside down and be like the upside down turtle in the water. So with the rebreathers was much more better, um, the trim and the swimming, and of course the um, consumption. Uh, so the student with disability has to be um, developed um, slowly and carefully, but it is actually possible. Um, working with uh, DDI and Andy as instructor trainer the last uh, 10 years, at least, um, I develop a lot of uh, training. Uh, I write some papers 
uh, it was the need of uh, deep diving specialty for disabled. So the DDI asked me about uh, these outlines. So I wrote the, down, the outlines of the uh, deep diver specialty. Um, never found, never see the, um, they were never issued. They never, I never saw those outlines out for them. Uh, for the divers, but actually it was the question. Many people, like uh, many recreational divers with disabilities, they like to travel um, around the world and they went to many dive centers that they said, yes, we have this uh, wreck here, but it is at 30 meters. And if you don't have the deep specialty, you cannot dive. This is another thing that we may uh, talk later about training and uh, the possibility for someone that has not the deep diving training to dive at 30 meters. From my, from my side, they can dive. Uh, but anyway, this is another topic. And uh, so I had to develop and to uh, make the deep diving specialty. And later, people ask me about... Uh, technical diving uh, outline. So I make the first instructor manual and outlines for the technical diver, for the disabled technical diver program. It was not issued. Um, so I'm like coming to the end, say that there is a completely new field, uh, ready for development, of course. It is um, a field that may be, is uh, very challenging for instructors, very challenging for disabled divers. And we think that uh, there is, there are more things to do. Um, I dive now the last uh, 10 years, let's say, almost uh, deeper than 30 meters diving for like five months a year. Um, I have been diving to the level of uh, 60 to 80 meters for more than a thousand times. And I never had an issue with the decompression sickness. Um, I was quite well after every dive. And uh, I had, uh, of course, problems many times. I had to, to solve problems. I had uh, to solve problems with my students or with uh, body divers, and, but everything went well. So I can be sure that uh, technical diving for the disabled is existing. Uh, the main organizations, maybe they can probably do things about it and uh, maybe put also there some paragraphs like if someone is not able to move the legs or whatever, he can do that skill in this way or that skill in this way, like we do in uh, recreational diving training. And of course, there, there is a need of instructors, that they have the patience, they have the will to train disabled divers. And of course, those disabled divers, they have to be enough skilled for that. That's my short presentation. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>